So this week, the glamorous MediaTek Summit kicked off in style, packed with enough hot chipset action to get the old saliva glands well and truly pumping. And this year, MediaTek was hosted at a sun-kissed luxury resort in California, boasting multiple free bars stocking enough alcohol to bring down an African bush elephant, near the Oliver Reed of African bush elephants. And also, the shutter stock results when you type in drunk businessman are absolutely wild. I mean, how do I get a job as one of these models and do they actually provide the alcohol? Because I'm right f***ing there. But sadly, for reasons too painful to go into right now, I couldn't attend. So instead, like basically every other event for the past 21 months, I've been streaming it over the interwebs right here in my crappy makeshift studio in traditional near perpetual British darkness. On the plus side, at least I guess I could mix things up a bit by straying occasionally from that hot computer and platform chat onto the occasional little foray on Pornhub, which if I'd attempted the same in a crowded auditorium, possibly would have met with some kind of resistance slash immediate deportation. But anywho, lots of that hot chipset action to cover, so let's slap on the budgie smugglers and dive right in. Cox ahoy! Techspert Weekly! So the biggest launch at the MediaTek Summit was actually the world's smallest smartphone chipset, the Dimensity 9000, an incredible 4 nanometer platform packing a Cortex X2 Ultra Core, a trio of Cortex A710 Super Cores, and support for LP DDR5 RAM. I don't know about you, but my nipples could cut through glass right about now. Now the rule of thumb is generally the smaller the chipset, the more power efficient it is, so hopefully the Dimensity 9000 will be capable of great things with minimal power drain. And hopefully all without getting hotter than the insides of a Findus crispy chicken curry pancake. Phones packing the Dimensity 9000 chipset will have the option to record 4K HDR video with three cameras simultaneously, and cameras up to a slightly bonkers 320 megapixels will be supported. So basically you can capture a woodlouse's naughty bits from about 100 paces. Gamers are served by the new ARM Mali G710 MC10 GPU, supporting ray tracing via a Vulkan SDK. And this wee beastie can render visuals at up to 180 frames per second at Full HD resolution. The Dimensity 9000 also comes with a built-in 5G modem supporting sub-6 connectivity, so fine for us Brits, and that will support up to 7 gigabits per second downlink speeds. You've also got Wi-Fi 6E support. And in other worlds first, you've also got Bluetooth 5.3 built in there too. And here, because you know you want it, is a big sexy infographic that basically says all of this stuff, what I've just said, in a less confused fashion. And you can expect the first smartphones packing the Dimensity 9000 chipset to start hitting stores in early 2022. Sadly, at the time I shot this video, I didn't have any more specifics on that, but if I do hear any more before the video goes live, I will bung it down in the description. Otherwise, I'll probably just do some sort of emoji cock and balls instead. But war Nelly, don't bugger off for a shandy and a pack of pork scratchings just yet, because that wasn't all. MediaTek also spaffed out. Okay, hi, no, sorry. I've just realized that this bit, uh, what I shot and put into the video and everything, it's actually under embargo until later this afternoon, so it's still secret when this video is set to go live at noon. So what I've done is I've stripped it all out, or I will strip it all out and replace it with this babbly bollocks right here. And uh, at some point later on when the embargo lifts, I'll probably just upload that little snippet as like a YouTube short. I might even upload it as a TikTok and do a stupid little dance while smearing myself in human feces or something. Anyway, apologies, uh, let's get on with it. There's lots of other uh, news trickling out of that MediaTek Summit as well, so definitely go check out uh, MediaTek's website for all you need to know on that. Some impressive stuff, certainly. That Dimensity 9000 sounds very promising indeed. Should be a big rival to the new Snapdragon 895. Certainly should power some very impressive camera tech. Should be good for gamers as well, uh, that's for sure. A few limitations like the Sub-6 5G, for instance, but overall, good stuff. This week's other tech launches were pretty scarce, but OnePlus did spaff out its excellent Pac-Man edition of the already pretty bloody good OnePlus Nord 2, complete with a snazzy redesign, themed shenanigans, funky Pac-Man ringtones, all kinds of good stuff. Like it. You even got a custom Lego phone holder, which I managed to single-handedly construct, despite being five whiskeys to the wiser. And speaking of five whiskeys to the wiser, it was a bit of an epic feel when it came to finding the hidden bonus content in this smartphone, uh, but I have been clued into it by the PRs, so this is what I missed. The first bit I managed to miss was an actual secret hidden compartment in the box itself, which you can reveal by yanking on the bottom bit. This then reveals the super-duper top-secret Pac-Man protective case. 
and this just slaps on like so and as you can see there adds a bit of extra pac-man uh, iconography to the back end as you can see you got all the ghosts on there uh pinky perky twatty and gerald and then if you watch the video you'll also know there's some hidden content revolving around the clue go for perfect and of course, with my feeble whiskey adult mind, I had absolutely no idea what that meant. What I should have thought is, of course, what is a perfect score in Pac-Man? To which a nifty bit of Googling uh, would tell me it is 3,333,360. So then all you've got to do is insert that number into the calculator and then hit equals. And then your phone kind of goes a bit fucking mental for a bit. Uh, Gateway, and then there's a quote from 1984. Got a bit of Orwell action. Hit OK. And that seems to be it. All right, fair play. So that seems to be all the, the hidden bonus stuff that I missed out on. But definitely go check out my full OnePlus Nord 2 Pac-Man edition unboxing if you want to see all of that shenanigans. Oh, cat's busy attacking the desk. Hello, Kuro. How you doing, mate? You all right? You look about as fed up as I do. Uh, besides all that Pac-Man shenanigans, Realme finally brought the sexually specced GT Neo 2 to European shores. And a really good thing too, because you get some proper decent hardware packed in there for a trouser-rousingly affordable asking price. You can grab the Neo 2 in this eye-gougingly bright green finish, but my review sample was the rather flaccid black effort. Still, the 6.62-inch monster packs a 120Hz AMOLED screen, the same Snapdragon 870 Smart as the brilliant Poco F3, complete with onboard cooling, and a 5000mAh battery supporting 65W Super Dart Charge shenanigans. And again, I've sorted you out with a full unboxing of that Realme GT Neo 2, so go check that out if you want to see how it handles a good bit of gaming, a quick camera test, all that shenanigans. And that's about all of the exciting tech shiz for this week, certainly all that my tired old brain can muster, so now it's time for the part of the show that's about as good for your soul as an all-night snuff movie marathon. It's fewer comments. <makes noise> fewer comments. <makes noise> okay, starting this week with Gur, who says, We can rebuild him, we can make him stronger. Uh, I mean, if you're referring to me, then definitely I'm all up for like Robocop style augmentations. Um, you know, a metal liver would go a long way. Glenn is saying, uh, Glad you're feeling better, now it's time for some anime. I mean, mate, it's always time for some anime, definitely. Uh, what have you guys been watching, by the way, out of curiosity? I know the uh, the Cowboy Bebop live action remake is going live today as this video goes goes live, but it uh, looks like reviews have been not particularly stunning on that one, unfortunately. So to be perfectly honest, I might just go away and just smash my way through the entire original anime series of that instead uh, to make myself feel a little bit better. Uh, I've also been watching a lot of We of the House Husband on Netflix, which is perfect for just little 10 minutes, uh, little, like, just f**k work. I'm just going to switch my brain off and watch something really stupid. And getting back into Jojo as well. Series 5 of that apparently coming to Netflix soon, which is awesome. Uh, and that's enough geeky anime chat, I, I promise. Uh, jumping now instead from anime to classic cartoons, Richard says, One of my favourite shows was Hong Kong Fooey, Henry the Mild-Mannered Pooch Janitor, who leapt into his filing cabinet and emerged as the masked Kung Fu Supremo. I mean, yeah, that show was absolutely legendary. I remember watching that a lot as well when I was uh, you know, a child of the sort of late 80s, um, but I, I guess they just, they just rerun it all because it was so friggin' awesome. I also had the, uh, the ZX Spectrum game of that, which was an absolute banger as well. One of the best uh, kids' cartoon video game adaptations of all time. It was basically just walking left and right, uh, twatting bad guys. That was pretty much as complex as it got, but a lot of fun. Yeah, tech expert, finger on the pulse of culture from about 40 years ago. Uh, SGSTU, who commented uh, last week, says, how did you get on with uh, Manigam, M Manigam? Again, no idea how to pronounce this bloody band's name. Uh, but yeah, I like uh, very much. Uh, so, so many albums, I don't even know where the bloody hell to begin. I think they've got something, was it like 16 albums or something or, on Deezer? Uh, so I just went with their self-titled, which was suitably epic. And speaking of metal, uh, Jamie says, speaking of metal, seems this year has been a great one for metalcore or modern metal. New albums from Error, Spirit Box, Architect, Text, While She Sleeps, Silent Planet, Bullet For My Valentine, Wage War, Every Time I Die, Trivium, Beartooth. And that's just to name a few. What's been your highlight of the year in terms of metal music? For me, it's got to be Spirit Box's debut album. Um, yeah, I mean, mate, there's been some absolute crackers, like basically pretty much everything you listed there. Every Time I Die, I absolutely love that album. I just can't stop listening uh, to that thing at all. Really like the new Ice Nine Kills as well, Silver Scream 2, absolutely adored the first one. So yeah, I love the uh, the cheesy goodness of the second one as well. Uh, I try to think, Bonavosaurus, uh, I 
really, really enjoy as well. Love those guys. Absolute banger after banger every single album they put out. Uh, Trivium, uh, Between the Buried and Me, uh, Phineas, which I'm not sure if I pronounce it right or not, but I really like that band as well. And we had you Devil Wears Prada this year as well, the Zombie uh, 2 EP. Just, yeah, just an absolute friggin' fantastic. It's been a crappier and more, more struggles, but as far as metal music goes, it's been, uh, been quite a whopper. And yeah, I'm determined next year to do Slam Dunk or download or one of the big festivals again at last. Maybe I can do Textbook Weekly live from the mosh pit. How friggin' awesome would that be? Uh, back onto uh, TV shows, uh, Patrick says, how about tech theme shows that missed the mark? Does anyone remember Holmes and Yo-Yo? I do not remember Holmes and Yo-Yo. That's definitely not ringing any bells up there. Uh, but it basically sounds like Sherlock Holmes pairing up with a 17-year-old Japanese girl dressed as an anime character. Okay, let's check this out. Holmes and Yo-Yo. Good old Google to the rescue, as always. Okay, an American comedy series that ran from 1976 to 77 following Detective Holmes and his new android partner, Yo-Yo, on their adventures and misadventures as Holmes teaches Yo-Yo what it is like to be human. Oh my god, I'm absolutely loving the, uh, the special effects here as well. Basically looks like somebody's uh, super glued a calculator to the poor guy's chest. And next up, Ian says, Chris, you don't sound like a Mackham, you sound more like a posh Geordie. <laughs> I mean, I don't even really know where to start with that one. For, for one, I'm trying to imagine what a posh Geordie would actually sound like. It sounds like something straight out of the fast show. Why I love, just off to the polo with the lads and then we're going to smash some Chardonnay down the big market. But yeah, I kind of see what you mean because I, I basically, I've been southernized to shit now. I've been down here for like 16 years, 17 years. I've, got, I've lost track of how many years I've, I've lived down London way. Um, to the point where I'm actually wearing coats to go outside post-December. I mean, I'm just a, a sham, frankly. Uh, next up, Corpsey, sorry if I'm all the pronunciation of that, says, uh, been in Uncle Spurt's loving arms since 200k. Oh, geez, I mean, you've stuck around that long. I mean, uh, congratulations, big thanks, and also commiserations, I guess, in not being able to find anything better on the internet than this sack of arse juice. Uh, Cappuccino says, a pint of Hennessy does the trick for me when I'm under the weather. You see, I've only ever tried Hennessy the once. Uh, a few years back, I was on a Samsung trip, I believe it was, to New York. Uh, they were doing a big launch. It was one of the Galaxy Note phones or something like that. Um, and I remember somebody managed to convince the PRs to spunk up, I think it was like $200 or something for a bottle of it in some posh wanky bar. So I tried a bit because I used to be really big into hip hop back in the 90s and of course all they ever banged on about was good old Hennessy. And I gotta say it definitely was not for me at all. I'd, I'd probably rather drink the contents of an aquarium, fish piss and all. And uh, you know, it's probably just by less than refined tastes but I honestly I can see why all those rappers back in the 90s had lots of gold teeth because their real teeth were probably just dissolved by that shit. Uh, next up, John Rock says, you can't get rid of crotch rot, trust me. D I mean, again, just give me those Robocop augmentations. Good old special extendable metal contraption. Replace the knackered old tool that's, that's already there. Uh, Channel GMC says, seen there's been a petition set up demanding that James Corden doesn't star in the recently announced Wicked film. Anything to do with you, Uncle Spurt? Um, no, strangely enough, but it does make my tummy all tingly knowing that there are other people out there in the world that are just trying their hardest to get James Corden to stick to late night American TV that I don't have to watch. Because yeah, if you could just stop always appearing in kids' films and TV shows that I'm then forced to watch on repeat with my daughter, that would be effing marvellous. Uh, next up, Stuart says, Uncle Spurty, what television do you want? Uh, the TV that I'm currently testing is Sky Glass, uh, which I've had for about a month now, and if my brain hasn't completely turned to mush, I believe my one month review should be live uh, right now, so go check that out for all you need to know. Whoop, whoop. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci says, Joseph Swan was an inventor from Sunderland who invented the light bulb. I'm not joking, look it up. Um, yeah, he's only bloody right, and I'm kind of ashamed that I didn't know that, really, but, I mean, that's it, kind of a sad state of affairs, isn't it, when some guy who literally just ate a lot of pasties on the internet is more famous than the inventor of the sodding light bulb. I mean, I hate to say it, but it just goes to show, doesn't it, sod qualifications and exams and, you know, really excelling yourself, kiddies. Don't bother bettering the world or anything, just do a stupid dance on TikTok while smearing yourself in Marmite, and you'll probably make it. Uh, running really low on time, so definitely better make this the last couple of comments. So, uh, Neil says, so it's a long comment, <laughs> of course, of course it is. Uh, you might be able to help me, Uncle Spurt. When I was a kid, I'm 41 now, I saw a cartoon where two fellas made out of flim were in a forest. One was small and angry like Joe Pesci, and the other was chubby and slow on the uptake. 
When the angry one got very angry, he would make the big one bend over and kick him up the arse. Any ideas? Uh, this sounds like a whole lot of weed was involved somewhere, either in the production of this show or in your memories of it. That's, that sounds very bizarre indeed. Uh, was it an American cartoon or British? Um, and are we talking like a series here or was it like a one-off? I got no idea at all, unfortunately, uh, on that. Um, but Spurt and Army Unite, if anyone has any idea what Neil's uh, random cartoon about two flame guys in the forest might be, uh, definitely please bang that down in the comments below. Maybe we can help him out and, and figure out what that is. And then final comment, David says, favourite 80s theme tunes, couple of bangers from Mysterious Cities of Gold and Battle of the Planets. Oh, absolute stone cold bangers, mate. I see your Mysterious Cities of Gold and I raise you duck tails. Uh, gummy bears, of course, bouncing here and there and everywhere. Absolute. That'll get stuck in your head for days, that frigger. And uh, Denver the Last Dinosaur as well. That was a stone cold banger. Denver the Last Dinosaur. He's your friend and a whole lot more. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Absolutely filthy dino slag. And also, my memory's a bit hazy, but like Tailspin and uh, Chippendale Rescue Rangers, were they 80s or was that? I think that was probably more 90s, wasn't it? Uh, but again, classic friggin' theme tunes. And apparently, they're rebooting Chippendale Rescue Rangers. <laughs> They've completely run out of ideas. Entirely now, haven't they? So anyway, uh, I think we got through an entire viewer comments without any talk about tech at all. Pretty much it was all just anime, metal, classic 80s cartoons and theme tunes. Strong work, guys. That's what I like. Not I'm to actually employ my brain for much more than remembering shit from when I was a kid. So anyway, a massive thanks to everyone who commented last week. It was a lot of fun going through, uh, through all those comments, as always. Please do smash your thoughts, questions, theories, whatever you like down below. We'll cover as many of those as possible next week. And speaking of next week, next week, next week, what the fuck is next week? Uh, next week is bugger all, really, as far as I can see. I don't have any scheduled uh, grand unveilings or anything like that. So what I'll probably be doing is just going through and trying to finish off uh, more of my review pile, which is ever stacking up. I've returned once more to the Samsung Galaxy S21 to see if it's improved at all uh, with various updates. So hopefully be bringing you a full almost one year review of that. And of course this time next week, uh, same as always, Friday at noon, Techspert Weekly. Woo, a highlight of anybody's week, I'm sure. So if yourselves a fan bloody tastic weekend as always. Big love for making it through to the end of the show, you absolute mentalist. And uh, oh yeah, plug subscribe and do that notification as well, like YouTube shit as usual. Uh, yeah, bye. Love you. Bye.